this video is going to talk mostly about the samurai class and how this build single-handedly carried the majority of the Elden Ring player base early on. Me included. To start, the samurai class starts off with pretty much everything you need to excel. It's got good stats, good starting items, and a good enough armor to use early on. Not to mention, it even starts with a bow and a shield too, in case you want to go for status strats. But of course, the start of the show is the weapon, the Uchigatana. This weapon is phenomenal, even towards the late game, as it's got good damage and innate build of bleeding status. Alongside its already good starting stats, the Uchigatana also had access to arguably, if not, the single best weapon art in the game, Unsheath. This weapon art deals very good damage, very good posture damage, it's got very low mana cost, and can scale alongside the weapon itself. If that all isn't music enough in your ears already, the Uchigatana is also an extremely flexible weapon, enabling it self to be altered in pretty much any way to complete any build you would possibly want. It's pretty much a godsend build for any deck's builds. To summarize everything we just said, the Samurai class is pretty much a class designed to not fail. So let's talk about what to do early on and on the late game to prevent any issues you might possibly have as you progress with the story. This video will contain some spoilers into the early game bosses, but I doubt you guys give much thought into that, given that you decided to watch this video. As good as the Uchigatana is, I have a different thought about the build, and that's to not use the Uchigatana at all, but to substitute that with another weapon, the Nagakiba. The reason why we do this is because the Nagakiba is pretty much just a longer Uchigatana. Its damage isn't too far off, but the range that it's got is why we chose to use it in the first place. The Nagakiba is an extremely long katana, adding a bit more reach into your arsenal. However, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. The Uchigatana is fine if you choose to keep it. Now, if you want the Nagakiba to get it, you can simply go towards this location from the first step, Side of Grace, and kill this NPC. Once he has been killed, he will drop the Nagakiba. The only downside to this is you'll be locked out of his questline later on if you choose to do this now. And because the Nagakiba isn't equipped with Unsheathed by default, the weapon art of the Uchigatana, we gotta go and get it manually. And for that, you want to go to this part of the map and kill Scarab Beetle that will drop it for you. After equipping Unsheath on your Nagakiba, you'll want to go to Forth Far Off and get the Radagon Sword Seal from within the fort and kill the dragon right outside of the fort. Watch this video if you don't know how to get here. Now, after killing the dragon and getting the Radagon Sword Seal, you will pretty much have enough levels and stats to wield the Nagakiba. I suggest getting to the required stats for the Nagakiba and pump the rest of the runes that you got left on Vigor, so that you don't die from a single hit like a wet noodle. Once this is done, you'll be able to head straight to Margit 
And let me just show you the power of this extremely early game build right off the bat, with no enhancements at all. As you can see, no sweat at all. This weapon alone, even when unupgraded, will carry you till Renala very easily. But before we go that far, get yourself a stone sword key from Stormhill and head straight to this location to get yourself the green turtle talisman. Once that's over, get here to get the Golden Vow Ash of War, which will add a 15% damage bonus and 10% defense. Now equip that on a dagger and let's see how Godric fares. Like a chill breeze, Godric falls very quickly, and this is simply a very simple build that didn't take much effort to get to. Now continuing onwards will be some items that you can get to keep on scaling throughout the mid game. The first one that you will get will be the Winged Sword Insignia, which will increase the damage of yourself after consecutive attacks. And the next one will be the Warrior Jar Shard that you will get by killing Alexander. You can get a better version of it if you choose not to kill him in continuous questline, but 
given that this is going to be a fast build, you can just kill him and get a worse version. The full version gives you a 15% damage to your weapon art, whilst this one gives only 10%. I also suggest that you do the Millicent's questline so that you can get a really good talisman at the end. Either the Millicent's Prosthesis or the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. Both are extremely good talismans that you will pretty much use for the whole run. And also, well, you can get both if you choose to do this on NG+. I'm sure some of you wonder, will we stay on this build route till the end? Well, the answer to this question is depends. Do you want to? If you want to, well, just keep it. This build is more than strong enough to pretty much beat the game by itself. However, if there is an extremely late game build that you want to try, try this one. This is what I call the Vampiric Blade build. Now, the full name would probably be the Vampiric Blade Dancer build, but it's just names at the end of the day. And it's pretty much what the name suggests. I'll talk more about it in my next video. But that's it from me. And I'll see you guys again on the next one. Thank you.